pray. Father, thank you for this morning, this time of worship, this time of enjoying you and one another in you. We pray that uh, uh, the message today would reflect that which the psalmist uh, sings, that the psalmist cries out uh, to you and to all who listen. We are grateful for this and we pray your blessing upon our time together. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is follow. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is a follow. Strength for today is mine always, and all of that I need for tomorrow. My Lord knows the way through the wilderness. All I have to do is a follow. A dear friend of ours who spent uh, years working with children, this was her favorite song. She sang it, the children sang it together. Um, it was a very, it was a favorite of Vera Mae Perkins. Um, how many of us have sung songs that we learned in childhood that stay with us today? Uh, Jesus loves me, this I know for the Bible tells me so, or Jesus loves the little children. Uh, these are our journey songs. I mean, they accompany us on our journey through life. And in a sense, they become very close friends. I mean, journey songs, why are they so important? It's because they remind us of important things. Jesus loves me. My Lord knows the way. Jesus loves the little children. I mean, they, they comfort us. They bring moments of calm and peace to an often troubled soul. Well, that is the role that the Psalms are supposed to play in our lives. Uh, they are God's journey songs for us. They are like poetry put to music. I mean, there are still churches today that will use hymnals. And if you look in a hymnal, you'll see that there's a collection of religious songs that were written and composed by Christians spanning centuries. And they're organized many times by theme or subject or special event. The Christmas songs are in one, one section. The Easter resurrection songs are in another section. Well, the book of Psalms is organized in very much the same way. I mean, we certainly, we have the, the Psalms of David. But there are other times where I'll talk about the Psalms of Asaph. Asaph was a prominent musician during the time of David. You have the Psalms of the sons of Korah. Those Korahites were Levites. They were also very involved in temple worship. And then you had the Hallel collection, praise collection. Well, this psalm, Psalm 121, is a psalm that belongs to a collection known as the Song of Ascents. Okay, now these were psalms that these were songs that were sung during festival processions, uh, as pilgrims would they ascended to the temple. Um, so they, they, they were sung during these special, these special events. But these songs of ascents, these are songs for the journey that is hard. It's a hard journey. I mean, Jews lived in all parts of the known world. 
And when they had festivals, just like what we see in Pentecost, uh, in Acts chapter, chapter 2, uh, uh, they would come from distant lands to Jerusalem to celebrate the festivals. Now, Jerusalem sits about a half a mile above sea level. And so to journey towards Jerusalem, you have to ascend. You have to go up. And you're going through very different, d difficult terrain. Uh, there are uh, valleys, there's dry riverbeds. Uh, it was also a very dangerous journey. There are a lot of wild animals and uh, different ty types of animals that you, you are fearful of. Many people, they would usually travel in caravans because of this. Also, you had the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the wild animals that are of the two-legged version. In other words, there are, a lot of, there are a lot of robbers and thieves along the way. And so when the psalmist says, I will lift up my eyes to the hills, he sees not only the end of the journey, but the hardship and the dangers that must be faced along the way. Now what is true for the psalmist, probably goes without saying, is very true for us. I mean, we too are on a pilgrimage or a journey. When you become a Christian, you live this life journeying through life with God. And you're journeying towards God. I mean, we come here to church and we praise, we worship, we fellowship, and we listen to God's word. We, we begin our days in prayer. We live out our lives for God. We are prayerfully going through life and through the struggles. And we look forward to our eternal home. And there are obstacles along the way. And they come in lots of different forms, don't they? Uh, financial hardships, difficult relationships, um, health challenges. You may be parenting a child and that child's kind of difficult, or that you're, you're raising a child in a rough uh, neighborhood. Uh, you may be someone, I see no children here today, but uh, there are many children that walk to school and have to walk a certain way, or maybe go out of their way so as to avoid certain kids that might want to do them harm. And, uh, and many of us, myself included, uh, have suffered uh, potential life-ending illness. So in all of our difficulties, we may cry out, from where does my help come? Uh, sometimes we're not always sure where that help comes from. I remember as a, as a young believer, um, you know, I, I became a committed Christian while I was studying music overseas. And it was uh, three weeks before my 21st birthday. And as a brand new Christian, um, I had to fly home. And I remember as a young Christian, um, as I got on that plane and as I flew away from Vienna, the, the further I flew away from where I found Jesus, I kind of felt uncomfortable because I thought, I'm leaving God behind. God's over there. I had, loc I had put God into a location, into one spot. Uh, that was me in my, in, my, in, my, in my youthfulness. God quickly taught me that he's not confined to a certain spot. In fact, I came to realize that, that this God was with me always. He would never, ever leave me. It didn't matter where I was. At, in time, I grew to understand that my help comes from God, and my God is the maker of heaven and earth. My God is big. He is huge. He controls the air that I breathe. He is a God that is so powerful and so consuming. Um, he brings out fear. He brings out awe. He is God, the maker of heaven and earth. You know, there's a, um, uh, there was an article that came out a while ago that was titled, Science Increasingly Makes the Case for God. Um, 
He writes that, let me read a little bit of this to you. Today there are more than 200 known parameters necessary for a planet to support life. Every single one of which must be perfectly met or the whole thing falls apart. Without a massive planet like Jupiter nearby, whose gravity will draw away asteroids, a thousand times as many would hit Earth's surface. The odds against life in the universe are simply astonishing. Uh, Fred Hoyle is the astronomer who coined the term Big Bang. You've probably seen that show, The Big Bang Theory. Um, well, he said that his atheism was, quote, greatly shaken, unquote, at these developments. He later said, quote, a common sense interpretation of the facts suggests that a super intellect has monkeyed with the physics as well as with chemistry and biology. The numbers one calculates from the facts seems to me so overwhelming as to put this conclusion almost beyond question. A uh, theoretical physicist said that, quote, the appearance of design is overwhelming. Um, the Oxford professor, John Lennox, said, the more we get to know about our universe, the more the hypothesis that there is a creator gains in credibility as the best explanation of why we are here. Science increasingly makes the case for God. The writer ends with this. He says, the greatest miracle of all time without any close seconds is the universe. It is the miracle of all miracles, one that inescapably points with the combined brightness of every star to something or someone beyond itself. This God, who is the maker of heaven and earth, this God is watching over you. Psalmist says he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The pagan gods slept. Many of the gods of our world today sleep. Yahweh never sleeps. He is constantly watching you and me. Jesus said, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is, is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. God has counted the hairs on your head. He is paying attention to every detail of your life. And so the Lord is watching over you. He's attentive. As you journey towards him, he is paying attention to you. The psalmist goes on. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The right hand is regarded as the chief place of honor and strength. I mean, Jesus told the Pharisees he would sit at the right hand hand of the Father, they understood what that meant. He equated himself with God, and they, and they tried to stone him. Okay, Matthew 26. See, for the Lord to be your shade at your right hand is to protect you not only from physical attack, but from mental and emotional attack. He is not just your strength. He doesn't just protect your strength, but your honor as well. I mean, some of the most potent attacks on us are not physical. They are verbal, accusations, slander, gossip, attacks on our character, attacks on our self-worth. Paul in Philippians 4 says, do not be anxious about anything. In every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then it says, and the peace of God which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That guard, the word for guard, means to garrison. It means that he ta if, if you trust him, if you pray, and, and you, you, you're, you're not anxious, but you present your request, 
You may finish praying and nothing has happened, but something has happened to you. He puts a guard or a garrison around your heart. In other words, he's telling you, and you sense it, you know it, that he's got you. He, he, he is protecting you. Okay. So the Lord watches over you. He protects as you journey towards him. He provides physical and mental safety for you. God also abides. He says, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forever. I mean, Jesus put it this way. He said, my sheep listen to my voice. I know them. They follow me. I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who, is, who has given them to me, is greater than all. And no one, he's emphatic, no one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. And then he declares, I and the Father are one. <clears throat> so the Lord is watching over you. He has you. He has you in his hands, never to let you go. As we journey towards him, he keeps us. He holds on to us, and He never lets go of us. So, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. You know, we are all on a pilgrimage. If you name the name of Jesus, we are on a pilgrimage. We are on a journey. We are journeying. Uh, I don't know. Uh, we are journeying through life towards our eternal home. But you know, some of us don't realize that we're on this uh, pilgrimage. I mean, for some, our attitude towards life is we're just trying to make it. We're just taking it day by day. For some, we're thinking, well, I'm just trying to figure out how life works. And some are asking, calling ourselves Christians. We're asking, who am I? Why did God make me this way? What is my purpose? It's times like these we need the message of Vera May's favorite song, The Lord Knows the Way Through the Wilderness. And we need the words of the psalmist, My help comes from the Lord. I know sometimes it's hard to grasp that, because on one hand, you've got help from the maker you have help God loves me um, maker of heaven and earth the all powerful God the scripture says our God is a consuming fire I mean I mean love and and fear how do they come together how do they work sometimes for us as believers we deal with this by maybe we'll focus on the love part and forget about the consuming fire part. Okay? There are some of us that would rather focus on the consuming fire part and not focus on the love part. And yet, both are there in Scripture. And for us, how do we hold these two massive things? Well, we need to not diminish either one. What happens is, as we journey with God, as we walk with God, as we walk in relationship with Him, then He brings these two together. That He, he this God who is incredible in His greatness and His power and His sovereignty and His watch over me, this God knows everything about me. I can be totally transparent before Him and I, I love Him. I love Him. In, in his power and in his grace and in his mercy and everything. It brings it all together. Um, Oswald Sam, Sam, uh, Chambers said this. He said, the remarkable thing about fearing God is that when you fear God, you fear nothing else. Whereas if you do not fear God, you fear everything else. So I encourage you, read 
the Psalms. Let them sing to you. And I encourage all of us to remember where our help comes from. And allow the truths within the lyrics of Psalm 121 to penetrate and strengthen our hearts. The maker of heaven and earth is attentive to you. The maker of heaven and earth protects you. The maker of heaven and earth has you. And the maker of heaven and earth is watching over you. And don't forget those songs that you learned in childhood. Let them remind you of the simple yet profound reality. The Lord knows the way through whatever wilderness you're going through. All you have to do is follow. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. This simple song of a sense that speaks so much to your love for us. And because of you being who you are, we can follow, we can rest, we can trust. We thank you, Lord, that you bring us to that place where we do not have to worry because you're bigger than any problem we face. And we thank you, Father, that you love us so much that it's not enough for us to know this in our heads. You want us to know this in an ongoing relationship with you. You want us to know this as you speak it to our hearts. So, Father, we pray that you would have your way with us. We pray that we would read your word and allow you to disciple us as you teach us through your word. And we're grateful, Father, for the wonderful relationship that you call us to and that you invite all who know of you to come and be a part of knowing who you are and walking with you. We thank you, Father, for this and pray your blessing upon us. In Jesus' name, amen.